I have a confession to make. I've never shot JPEG until now. Let's get into it. In this photo exploration, we're gonna shoot every single film simulation that the Ricoh GR3 and the GR3X has in camera. We will take a look at each one, the tones, the contrast, how they handle highlights and shadows and the clarity. I will also show you how to add a recipe from the Rico app that you can download to one of the custom slots in the image control feature. This is the Leadenhall Market in London. For the settings, I was in Aperture Priority, which was set up with one of my custom modes, U1. Because I was spending the day in a mostly covered area, I set my auto ISO from 100 to 1600, with a minimum shutter speed of 1 over 200 seconds. This allowed me to capture people in sharp detail, and the ISO covered any eventualities whether I was deep in the market or on the outskirts where the light was coming in. The focus mode I used was auto area AF in center mode. On this day of the shoot, using my Ricoh GR3X, I didn't have any out of focus shots using this mode at all. The final task is to put the camera into RAW plus JPEG. There, I've finally done it. There was absolutely no light on the day, which is disappointing from a photography standpoint. Therefore, I worked mainly for the colours, which were thankfully plentiful in Leadenhall Market, and I also focused on capturing interesting characters. So the standard simulation is, as you can expect, pretty much standard. It's just using the same image profile as the RAW file, minus a vignette. Nothing to see here, let's move along. You can see that the Vivid recipe adds a colour punch that really brings out the vibrance of the images. I actually find it quite pleasing. It adds a mild tinge of yellow to the highlights and it saturates the reds that you can see. To me, it brings the photos alive and I can definitely see me using this vivid simulation again. What do you think of this simulation? Would you use it? What's there to say about monotone apart from it being a classic look? I find black and white really works well at its best when there's no light or there's a lack of colour in the image. Compared to the regular monotone, I definitely prefer the soft monotone. I find it takes away any contrasty elements that can distract the eye and basically evens out the tones in the images and it also even adds a touch of haze that I like. To me, the soft monotone allows the story of the image to come through, making it less about the contrasts and the tones. And if you know me, you've probably seen me reduce clarity on a lot of my photos and this soft monotone definitely has a reduction of clarity. Another black and white simulation that is bolder than the original monotone. Or dark colours, this really does work. I've noticed that it creates a beautiful contrast from the shadows to the light areas of your image. Like the original monotone, it's pretty timeless with that added punch of extra contrast. This simulation just takes it up a notch with extreme contrast. 
depending upon the subject, it can create a solid figure to ground. Figure to ground is where the subject is viewable, being distinct from the background, no matter where they are standing. And you could do this through lighting, depth of field, or even color. It does have a tendency to crush the black slightly and slightly blow out the highlights, but in this kind of setting, it actually works. Which one of the monotone recipes that we've seen is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. A pretty new simulation is the negative film simulation. This is actually lifting the shadow slightly. It's nice, it also reduces saturation and pushes the reds to more of an orange. It's pretty good actually. Would you use this as it is or would you change it at all? So I like the positive film simulation. It's not that much different from the DNG file, but you can see that it adds a certain amount of contrast punch to the highlights and the shadows, making the image look more punchy overall. Again, you can tweak this in the settings how you like. I really like that about the Ricoh Cameras film simulations. You can add saturation, take away sharpening and clarity, change the white balance. Every single film simulation setting is up to added oomph. This is some extreme punchiness with low saturation and high contrast, so it does actually live up to its name. It's nice to strip out the color and make it about the highlights and the shadows. What are your thoughts on bleach bypass? I love the hazy look of the retro simulation. It definitely takes away the clarity it also mutes the tones and adds quite a bit of haze, which I think is pleasing to my eyes anyway. There seems to be an overall hint of blue. I really like this recipe and I will use it again in the right situation. I can imagine this might work at the seaside or on the city streets. Now, I don't particularly like hanging out in public restrooms and this HDR simulation makes every image look like you've hung out in a public toilet. I think it's hideously painterly and overly detailed, which it's supposed to be. I get it. I just don't like it. It makes subjects look like they are ill where they are aging 70 years within a day. If there are any pluses, it's the detail in the architecture in the market can actually make this photo look more interesting than it actually is. You're going to have to look at some of my edits because I can't leave these photos with the memory of the HDR tone on them. The cross processing look pushes the colors towards the oranges and the pinks. It's definitely creating a specific filter, kind of like the Instagram filters, that's very visible to give your images a certain look. And that's because all the tones are pushed in one direction. And as you can see, it's also increasing the highlight. And this cross-processing simulation is one of my favorites of the day. I can imagine this will create a divide so let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. So this is the recipe that I added from the Rico recipe app into one of the custom slots in the image control feature. This is the Kodak Chrome simulation. I think it's beautiful. It pushes the colors towards orange and red, and on the whole, it's very vibrant and punchy. If you wanna see how easy it is to add recipes to the camera, that's coming up next. Mm -hmm. 
adding a new recipe is mostly simple. Open up the Rico app on your phone, choose a recipe that you like. So the simulation in the image control feature needs to match the recipe in the Rico app. In this case, it's positive film. Then you press the FN button to adjust the parameters. The saturation is plus three, minus one on the hue, high low key minus two, contrast minus two, contrast highlight plus two, contrast shadow minus four, sharpness plus one. You set the shading to zero and let's add plus two on the clarity. You press OK to save that and then you head back into the menu to the global settings, which is a little bit weird, I know, to be taken away from the image control settings. We don't need to turn on the highlight correction, which is in the derange correction, as I've already got it on. So let's now put the shadow correction on low Peripheral illumination correction is on. This is supposed to stop vignetting in JPEGs. Noise reduction is off, which it already is. And then you go into the white balance and it's already on daylight. And here, as you can see, you press the FN button to get to the white balance settings. This can be a little bit confusing at first, but it's quite easy once you know how to do it. Here, the white balance compensation AB should be at A10, and the white balance compensation GM should be at G4. And then you press OK to save the settings. Then you go into your save state menu thingy, and you save this to a box within your custom U dial setting, which is where you save your separate settings. As you can see, this is already saved. So let me just hit enter to show you how it works. For this profile, you can see that the ISO can be up to 6400 and we're already on 1600, so that's fine. And the exposure compensation should be at plus one third to one stop. So what was your favorite simulation that I used and how would you change the one that you liked, if at all? I'd love to know, so drop me a comment below. Remember to please give this video a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Now take a look at this video here where I test out the Osmo Pocket 3 for nighttime and daytime street photography. Until we meet again, go forth and create.